Welcome to part 5 of the tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how I create some locator pins so I'd be able to actually flip the body over to machine the back cavity that we created in part 4. So I'm going to create a new drawing later, layer and call it locator pins. And I'm also going to turn on the grid so I know where I want to place these pins or holes in the stock. At first I'm going to change the grid size. So I have quarter minor lines at a quarter inch. Just helps to define the location of the pins a little easier. And now let's zoom in a little bit. Pay no attention to the dog in the background. And we're going to draw a circle. And we have snapped the grid on, so it's going to be the center is exactly in that point. And let's just draw one. And then we click Enter. And then I can go over and change the diameter to a quarter inch. Perfect. Okay, and I can then go up to the top here. And draw another circle. In the same location in the upper corner. Oops, that was going to be a little big. Let's change the diameter to a quarter inch. Perfect. And we can zoom out there. Okay. So let's select these. So we could either just draw the other circles. We could copy and move. But in this case, we're just going to do another mirror operation. So we're going to mirror them along the center line. Make sure we have snap to grid on, so perfect. So when we click Enter, circles are copied just where we want them on the other side. So if we flip the stock over, they'll be in the same location, front or back. annoying pop-up windows. Okay, and back to it. So now what we're going to want to do is create machining operations to actually drill those holes. So let's just start with the eighth inch part and we're going to paste it. Okay. 
And then we're going to call it quarter inch. And we'll delete that machine operation. Now that pop up was since I took a machining operation that had a different size end mill set than the part, it asked you on a cha change to the new value and inherit the value from the part. And I did. So when I had originally done the routes, I had actually forgot to do the wire channel. So that's what we're going to do here. So that's why we're using a quarter inch end mill. We're just going to create the route or and do a pocket for the wire channel. And since we're using a quarter inch end mill, we're going to make the depth of cut a little shallower and the target depth is different. And we do need to set the final depth in increment. Everything looks pretty good, except we just need to change this to a quarter inch. You might think we have squirrels in the house. That's just the dog crawling under the couch trying to get her toys. Change the name of the out file since we had copied it apart. Now this is important because if you left it the same and you generated it, it would just overwrite one of the other parts and when you went to cut it, it would not be correct. Um, also another good reason to run simulations on all your G-code first if you can. All right. There's the wire channel. Okay, now since we are done with that, now we're going to create the part for machining the locator pins. And it's not going to be an end mill, it's going to be, a, we're going to actually use a drill. Could use an end mill. Um, and it wouldn't really hurt anything, but 
since we're doing a little tutorial here, we'll, we'll switch to a drill. Okay, let's change the default tool size and type. Now I hadn't I haven't defined any drills in my tool library, so I'm just set it to a a two flute spiral, but set it to a profile of drill. And you see there, I had forgot to, for the wire channel, just change the tool size to a quarter inch. So let's select all the locator pin holes, and we're going to do create a drill MOP or machining operation. Let's call it locator pins. And you see we have four primitive IDs there. So we're going to actually do each, each locator pin hole. Yep, got to remember to change the out file name. Okay, go back to these, and we'll start off by changing the clearance plane to zero. Now, for the clearance plane, you could I could set that to say something like minus 0.5, um, so the machine wouldn't have to go as far when it retracted and moved around the body, but uh, to be safe. I go I like to go all the way up, have it go all the way up. And I definitely don't want to drill that deep. We're just going to drill, let's say, I'm thinking here, a uh, half inch. And there's all kinds of parameters you can set for the for drilling. Uh, the peck distance is basically how far in and out you want to go each. Now there's that annoying pop up again. You know the peck distance is how far in you want to go. The retract height is how far out you'd want to go. You know that way you can clear the hole. Uh, hopefully prevent the drill bit from wandering. Yeah, you can leave the cut rate high there because that's just going to be really the movement between each hole. Uh, the plunge rate is more important. You know, you don't want to probably go too fast, but you also don't want to go too slow. And there, since we switched to drill, it's, got, you, it's asking if you want to do a can cycle. Not really completely sure what the definition of that is, but basically it's a drilling operation. Okay. Let's generate the tool paths. It's kind of hard to see there. 
but in each corner you can see little green circles and maybe let's just zoom in a little bit and you can get an idea there we go and you can see that's it I zoom back out all right let's produce our G code make sure the names correct here save everything Produce the G code. Okay, now we're gonna take here, go from here, and switch over to Cut Viewer, and just take a quick look at this. Uh, it really won't take very long. I'm just drilling four holes. Just one, two, three, four, and done. Didn't take very long at all. So, now you're wondering what I'd do with these. Well, so I'd drill the, have the holes drilled first, actually on the um, waste board where my stock is going to sit. And then I'd put my stock on, the, on and clamp it down and run the locator pin g-code and drill the holes on the top of the stock then I would take and flip it over make you know and put the pin actually put some pins or dowels in the holes in the um, spoiler board and set the stock on top of that with the holes that I just drilled in the stock facing down and that should hold it and then I would go and drill the again the locator pins on the back side of the stock. So I know then going forward whenever I flip the body over and w had the locator pins in place it would be in the right location. So when I actually do that the next time I'll make sure I take a video of it and so you can see what I'm talking about. You know you can do the same thing it'd, it'd be very useful for you know drilling the string through holes you know you can do the pin trick and actually put the locator pin in the um, through hole on the top after you flipped it over and you're gonna drill from the back it's the same idea anyways uh, you probably don't want to just sit here and listen to me talk so I'm gonna end this one and thanks again for watching